Hi guys, welcome to part two of this video series on how to make this signet ring. We have just gotten through, um, we've just finished you know, making the general shape here and now we're going to move on to uh, trimming up the sides here. To do that, we're going to draw a little, a little line, which we call blend targets, or some people might call blend targets. Um, we're going to draw a line here. We want to be somewhat above uh, this edge here. And then we're also going to come and draw a line down here. I want this ring to be four millimeters wide. So um, it, would, it would be like this. You need to come in two millimeters on one side and together that would make four, four millimeters on both sides. But when we part of do, making this ring, uh, we're going to be blending two surfaces together. That's going to create kind of a, a bulge out in this direction. And to compensate for that, I'm going to bring this curve in about here. And for this particular project, we don't have to be precisely four millimeters wide. But if it is, you may have to kind of experiment, you know, on where to place this line. Uh, Unlike most rings, this is not as precise as uh, as a lot of rings are. As far as, you know, it doesn't have a clean edge, at least not the way that I am doing it here. There may be a way to, to make it have a very crisp, defined edge, but the way I'm going to do it, it will not. We're going to blend these two curves together with Curve Blend. And... Um, I'm going to project this line. I didn't do this in the speed model video, but I'm going to do this here. I'm going to project this line onto the surface to help me decide where, you know, where to place this line and maybe even the angle that I place it at. All right. So as I move this line up or down, um, okay, I did something wrong there. So as I move this line, that will adjust uh, this line here, which will adjust also the projected line. Okay, and then going in from the front view, uh, you can see the results as well. So, uh, you know, if I move the line way up, you can see this curvature goes up higher and higher, and that may be something that you would like. Uh, if you come down really low, you can see it gets really, really low uh, to here, and that may be something you like. So you can experiment with different. Uh, different distances here. I'm going to put it uh, where it is just slightly lower than, you know, closer to the finger than this line here. So maybe, I mean, I'm just, I'm just eyeballing it here. So maybe about there. But that is something you could experiment with. I no longer need this projected line, and I don't need uh, it also projected onto the inside. I don't need that either. Uh, we're going to come into the side view again, and we will select this line and mirror it over. And then we're going to use those two lines uh, to cut off the, the sides of the signet ring. So coming to Solid Tools, clicking on Wire Cut, click that line, enter a couple times. And then do the same over here. Again, if it doesn't highlight the part that you want to delete, you, you may need to click on the canvas somewhere until it does. All right, we're, we've got that done. And now uh, we're starting to get a lot of curves. It can be a little confusing to look at all those curves. I'm going to um, just hide this ring for a moment. I'll type in HI and just hit enter. I'm just used to doing that. Uh, you could come to the visibility uh, section and hit hit hide objects there. I'm going to select all these curves and put them on their own layer. I'm going to put them on the blue layer here, change object layer. All right, and then I'm going to type show to bring that ring back and I'm going to turn off for now the curves. I may, if I need them again, I'll, I'll bring them back. We're going to use, uh, under the solid tools, we're going to take this uh, extract surface command and remove these two surfaces here. And then we're going to blend between those two surfaces using the blend surface command. I'm going to come down here and click and click. And that's good. It's giving me the result I want. I really want these uh, blend points to be on this bottom seam here, but if they're not, like uh, 
they may have randomly been somewhere else like perhaps over here you can actually just drag them down and snap them here or you can leave them where they are if you prefer and just you know if you're satisfied with the results it produces that's good now but by default it should be set to curvature and it will not be set the same height and if that gives you the results you want that's fine I'm gonna hit OK uh, to accept that surface right now uh, but we're not ultimately going to go with that I just want to show you a couple things to be aware of so here in the right view um, our finger rail is right here but this is the top of the finger and you can see that this blended shape uh, at least I think this is the top of the finger let me make sure about that we will blend from here out so yeah so this is the top of the finger right right here and uh, you can see that the blended shape comes under that and that is absolutely something you want to avoid so this would end up being probably painful to the customer and they may not even be able to get their their finger in there <laughs> so you want to avoid that and then also um, because we didn't have same height selected um, you, you've got this edge here and you've got this edge here and as they get further apart the height of the blend is taller and wherever they're closer together the height of the blend is shorter so for instance down here uh, the these two edges are closer together and so the, the blended curve is shorter than it is say here where the two curves are further apart we don't want that we want the height to be consistent everywhere and we also want to make sure that we avoid having that uh, blended shape drop under the finger rail so I'm gonna leave that finger rail that line that represents the top of the finger I'm gonna leave that there for right now and we'll run that uh, command again hit enter and the first thing is you're probably going to want it set to tangency in this case on both uh, one and two and even just doing just that has already helped with bringing this where it doesn't fall under the finger rail anymore so that's good and then you may uh, you know depending on how important it is oh we want you definitely want same height turned on let's see how that affects this so I actually don't want it to be this shallow I would like for it to be uh, something more like this uh, a kind of a, a sharpish some sharpness to the rounded area here to the blend but the more you do that the further out it comes and uh, this is our four millimeter mark here so depending on how important that is you may want to absolutely like make sure that your curve does not go past the four millimeter mark if well it's not four it's two but you know that would be duplicate uh, mirrored over to the other side um, so depending on how important that is to you you may want to restrict yourself to that and so then if you're not satisfied with this uh, you would probably need to redo uh, trim it like maybe to a shallower angle up here this this where we trimmed here you might want to trim closer to the finger rail or something I wanted a little more uh, sharp down here so I'm just going to go more like that so I want this to be like that but this is something that you know will be up to you things that you will need to experiment with so what I'm doing there is I'm, I'm losing a little bit you know I'm going a little past the four millimeter mark at which some of this is what you're going to lose in the finishing process we're probably going to come back a little bit anyway but in, in my case it was more important to me to get this curvature up here I prefer that than this four millimeter uh, measurement that I have come up with um, I'm going to mirror this over to the other side this blended uh, section and then make sure that you select both blended sections not and then also the inside be sure you select the inside and the outside and then join them all together and you should get a closed poly surface all right so now we have um, you know we're getting closer to what we want here uh, the next step is going to be to hollow out the inside of the ring and uh, and then after that we're going to need to do the you know render out the ring so we're probably going to do the we're going to need to do not probably but we are going to do the 
following in what is it part part three and then or is this part three <laughs> I can't remember right now I think this is part two isn't it so uh, you know we'll, we'll do a part three where we uh, do the hollowing and then we'll probably end up doing the rendering in a part four all right guys so again if you like this kind of content please subscribe and if you enjoyed this video give me a thumbs up I would really appreciate that thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in part three